So we are now halfway through 2020. If you're building a PC now, should you buy Intel or AMD? This has been the classic question and both Intel and AMD have released new products recently. So let's see which one should get a spot in your build. Let's get started. Hey guys, Tiago with Classical Technology. Thank you for joining me for another video. Remember to smash that like button, subscribe if you like my content, leave a comment below. Are you looking to get an AMD or Intel system? Now, of course, AMD versus Intel is one of the most heated arguments in computer building history. Not even the GPUs have this amount of real competition. Either people will choose AMD side or Intel side. Sometimes it goes back and forth. And of course, you can't really blame people. I mean, Intel was pretty much the only game on the block for many, many years. And people got a little bit mad at them because they would just release very minor updates as the years went, not really reducing the price too much, not really having anything extraordinary at all. Now, when AMD rolled around with their Ryzen processors, all of a sudden, everybody was off to the races. You had very affordable multi-core CPUs that performed really, really well for much cheaper than what Intel was bringing. I mean, Ryzen brought the 16-core 3950X recently. Of course, the 3900X. Very, very capable processors. And the biggest proof of this, if you guys remember Intel's X99, that's the previous generation enthusiast platform, as they used to consider it, that used to have all of the heavy hitters. We're talking about the 16. 950X that used to be the you know basically a two thousand dollar processor. There was no competition. Now, as Ryzen came in the mainstream to compete against Intel's Z170, Z270, Z490 as it is now, the mainstream processors started encroaching on the space of pretty much the enthusiast level chips of before. I mean, look what you have in the mainstream on the Ryzen side. You have a 16 core processor in the 3950X for a fairly reasonable price. I mean, it's not two thousand dollars. You know, it's well under that. You have the 3950X for a fairly reasonable price. Even the 3900X, which is a 12 core processor, can be found anywhere from $400 to $500. Now, that's definitely very, very fair. But recently, Intel has done a little bit of a response to AMD, who in turn responded back. First response from Intel came in the 10th generation. Now, of course, we have to realize Intel is playing catch up here. AMD has been the favorite since the last generation. They've just had better performing chips for the price, like the 3900X that we mentioned. Even across the board, such as the 3600 is an extremely capable gaming CPU for a very fair price of under $200. It competes with things that used to be high-end on the Intel side, like the 8700K, really not too long ago. So now Intel released their 10th generation. I've done a build with their new 10900K, and now if we separate a little bit between arguing about AMD and Intel, in isolation, that's actually a pretty good processor. I mean, thermals are pretty good. It's a 10 core processor that goes well over five gigahertz. That's definitely very impressive. And it's in the $500 range in terms of price. If you compared where Intel was a few years ago at a $2,000 price for a 10 core processor, that didn't even perform this good or over five gigahertz. But instead of giving that praise to Intel, we do have to give that praise to AMD for coming in the market, being competitive and really squeezing Intel to have to produce things like this now the problem is if you're building a PC now in 2020 let's say now it's July you want to build a PC and you need a processor where do you go do you go to Intel or do you go to AMD AMD just released a couple of new processors as well, the XT version. Um, for example, the 3900 XT, and on a little bit lower end, the 3600 XT. Basically, these are about the same price as the 3600 or the 3900. The only difference is they're gonna clock a little bit higher. Now, this is really meant to go up against Intel's 10th generation, just because a lot of people are choosing it based on the frames per second you're getting in the game. And of course, the higher you can clock your CPU, not to mention, you know, multi threaded performance doesn't affect games as much you really want a high ipc or the high clock so amd being able to do higher clocks with their xt series of processors even though they're not that different they can get a couple of percentage increases over the previous generation the 3900x so that makes it a little bit more appealing for people that are comparing head to head to intel and it definitely makes it a lot more confusing for the consumer when you sit down to order your parts or you walk into like a micro center what do you get do you get get a 10900K, a 3900X, maybe a 3900XT, you really have to go based on your budget. 
I think now motherboards on both sides are really good enough. I mean, you have formula motherboards, for example, on the Intel side, you have it on AMD side. So those motherboards that used to be just on the Intel side, you also have on AMD. So I wouldn't base your acquisition of a processor solely based on the motherboard you can get. I would definitely try to think of what your budget is. For example, if you want to get something around the 3600 range, I still think that CPU was one of the best on the market. So if you're going for something like that, you don't want to break the bank, but you definitely want to have very good gaming performance and you definitely want to have, you know, decent multi-core performance in case you want to do some content creation or streaming or something like that. 3600 is fantastic. I don't even think you necessarily have to go for the XT version, but of course, if that's available and the price difference is pretty small, I would definitely get the XT version. It's just gonna be a better bin chip. You're gonna get better gaming performance as well as better performance across the board. The mid range is where it gets a little bit harder to decide. You do have stuff like the 10600K, the 10700K, and also on AMD side, you're gonna have the 3700, the 3800X. They're all actually very good CPUs. I would basically see whichever one you can find a better deal on, a better price. Um, some of them have been a little hard to find, especially the newer Intel chips. Whatever you find with a good price, I think you should generally be okay. They have gotten a lot more competitive lately where there isn't an absolutely clear winner by a mile. Sometimes AMD is better. Sometimes Intel is better in certain things. And this is also going to translate to the higher end. When you reach something like the 10900K, if you want the absolute best gaming chip, if you want to look at stats and things of that nature um, maybe you're playing high refresh rate or, or something like that then maybe i would consider getting the 10 900k it's also going to overclock you know pretty nicely it already goes over 5 gigahertz it's a very very capable chip at 10 cores i definitely don't fault anybody for getting that chip i think it's a very very good processor of course comparatively you do have the 3900x and the 3900 xt I would get whichever one that is, first of all, within your budget and more widely available. It may be hard to get a 10900K at this point. I have seen a few pop up, but they seem to be selling out fairly rapidly. The 3900X still performs really well in games. It's going to be a little bit under the 10900K, but its multi-core performance is going to be slightly better. And of course, the new XT version is going to get closer to the 10900K. So if you can find one of those and you can't find a 10900K, that's definitely a very, very attractive option. You're getting better single core performance as well as the fantastic multi-core performance. So to summarize, let's split it into the three tiers just to make it simple. I think on a little bit more of the more budget end, the 3600 is still a fantastic processor for the price, especially if you can find it for a pretty good deal. It performs really well for gaming. If that's your budget, I would definitely get that. As you get into the middle tier where you have something like the 10700K or something like that, or the Ryzen 3800X, it becomes a little bit here just because the price is starting to get really close performance is a little bit closer um, then i would just go whichever one you prefer whichever one you can get for a nicer price the same thing holds true for the higher end if you want a 10 900k and you like intel i think you're going to know you're going to want that already but you may be able to save a little bit going with like a 3900 or a 3900 xt so i think that's likely what i would do i would base it on whatever you can find and your budget um, definitely processors have gotten a little bit closer than they were before in terms of their pricing and their performance. So I don't think you can make as many mistakes here. I think whichever side you go on, they seem to be performing pretty well for the price. Nothing's really outrageously overpriced. Of course, if you want something like the 10900K, you're definitely gonna be paying a little bit more, but you are getting 10 cores that really clock very, very highly. 3900X has always been a fantastic value, especially if you can find it for closer to $400. 12 cores, it does great in gaming, it does great everywhere pretty much. AMD is still, really giving Intel really intense competition, even though Intel has these new chips, it's definitely starting to balance out a little bit more in the market. It's not something where you say, all is avoid this, it's terrible and overpriced, or get, definitely get this. You can definitely make an argument on both sides on Intel and AMD. So for now, I would go check your budget first. Let's say if you have a 500 something dollar budget, find a motherboard you want on both sides, and then you can decide, do 
I really need a 10900K or, or will I be okay with a 3900X? Is it going to affect the games that I play? You have to see what's important to you in your budget. But now I think most of these CPUs are pretty capable. Like I said, prices definitely came down. So you should do fairly well in choosing something there. And of course, in the in more entry level range, the 3600 is definitely fantastic. I still think that kind of stands out. I think the bigger questions here are going to be as you go up towards the higher end and start spending more money, you have to see whichever factors are going to be important for you. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching. Remember to subscribe, smash that like button, leave a comment below, and I'll see you guys on the next video.